Today I am so excited! Woo! Finally, after all these years, you morons better appreciate this shit. <laughs> no. Uh, anyways, yeah, I wanted to make this tiny little behind the scenes video showing all the process behind the latest animation I made. Which, in case you haven't seen it, I mean, why wouldn't you seen it? Why would you be here if you haven't seen the animation? It's, it's right down below here in the description. Yeah, go, go watch it, give it a like, all that good stuff. Oh, and by the way, if you want to know how to make animations look from this to this, make sure to keep watching until the end of the video where I'll show how to do so. Just wanted to throw that one out there. Okay, let's go! Here we have Sonic's rotation, which is basically the character from different angles for reference. Not much to say about this, uh, honestly. Uh, same thing with Amy here. Uh, you can see her character, all these different angles. Again, not much else to say. Here we have the main poses for Sonic, like when he's on the ground there, resting. Here we have him when he's evading Amy's hammer, and when he's on the ground, crawling away before running off. I used all of these poses, but I ended up changing them a little bit. Uh, you can see that in the final animation. And here we have his main expressions. I didn't use them all. First of all, this one is very ugly. Uh, this one I really liked was supposed to be used while Amy was standing up, but the issue was that Sonic was talking while this was happening, so it had to be removed. Here we have Amy's different poses. They went through some changes on the final animation too, mainly on her proportions. You can see this one wasn't really used, I'll talk about it later. And here's her expressions. I used them all except maybe this one that also went through some changes. And here's the storyboard. Uh, to be honest, I wouldn't call it that since it's sort of like a mix between one and a thumbnail which is a process previous to the storyboard. Uh, since I was going to be the only one animating, I decided to go from this straight to the layout, not making an animatic. Uh, some interesting things, Amy was supposed to be flirting with Sonic here, but I had to change it since she sounds more irritated in the audio. Here she was supposed to hit Sonic while they were running off, but since the camera moves towards the basket you wouldn't even see this so it got removed too. And here's the layout, although I must say this is kind of a mix between a layout and an animatic. Uh, what I mean is that this has the characters on model but it's lacking all the information needed on a layout. Plus, this also went through some changes later. Again, as I was the only one animating, I didn't really care for this that much. But man! Who'd have thought I was the real King Arthur? <laughs> That's the lamest excuse ever! You just forgot about our date! No, no, it's true, I tell ya! Yikes! No! Amy, wait! Put down that hammer! Hey! You get Main stuff you can notice, you can see the background concept here. Uh, you can also see there were less scenes here. I had to add more down the line since it looked weird having Sonic and Amy talk to each other in the same scene and then cut to Amy doing this expression, I don't know. Uh, some other changes, uh, Sonic was supposed to do this whole talking. I removed this movement since Sonic is already a very expressive character and this looked very overly exaggerated for the tone of voice he's talking with. Also, here you can see the bosses I was talking about earlier. Amy was supposed to be screaming in place before running off. The issue is that in the audio, Amy's voice is already fading, so it would be super weird to have her standing in place while her voice was getting lower and lower. So I had to make this movement faster by deleting these poses and adding a smear. Uh, okay, I think that would be it. Uh, let's check the animation now. I'll only show these two scenes from now on, okay? First things to notice, Sonic has no eyes in between keyframes. I make them during the coloring process, you'll see why and how later. Uh, you can also see his hands are blue. This is because when I first make the animation, I make the hands either as a ball or as a structure in between keyframes. Only when the animation is finished, I make the proper hands. Main reason being they are difficult to make, and then I make them in a different color to tell them apart from the placeholder. Other things to point out, uh, you can see the character disappear when running off. 
This is because I make that animation on a different file, like a different project. Then I drag those keyframes to this one and drag their position using animation tools in Toon Boom. This saves me a lot of time. You can see those full animations in place here, with their little grid to help me know where their feet have to be. Here are some grand, some grand grounds. Here are some backgrounds my friend Tohoret made. Uh, here you can see the overlay, the background, and underlay in different layers. Uh, same thing here with this larger background. This red square represents where the camera has to be before moving, and here's how it looks in Tumbo. Here you can see the full tree among some other things. Now onto the cleanup and coloring. One thing to say about this cleanup, the rough line was both an artistic and a technical choice. What I mean is that by having this type of line I could get away with having some imperfect lines since it gives a bit of a sketch feel to it. You can see in the final animation how some lines aren't connected and some go through each other. And this is how I make the eyes. Uh, first off I have three layers, one where I color the full character except the white part of the eyes. Uh, once this is done, I copy this layer and I color the white part of the eyes. Then, in between, I make another layer where I have the actual eyes and I position them as I need. This saves me from having to erase parts of the eyes that shouldn't be seen, like here for example. So those were pretty much all the processes previous to adding the extra visual effects, which I'll show you now how they are done. Set the composition to what we need like this okay then we import our video in this case it's a png sequence because i need it to be in a different layer than the background next we pre-compose it import the background and some other files i need to get the specific colors using this example uh, yeah now once we have everything we begin copying and pasting the character layer two times one for the shade and the other one for the lighting. Then we create a solid, right click, new, solid, and call it shade, for example. Then we pre-compose it again. Uh, in this case, I set the opacity to 80%. Uh, then with the pen tool, we create a mask so we can have the solid only where we need it, which should be around here, since it's supposed to be Sonic's shadow. Uh, then we pick this little icon right here that kinda looks like the Dreamcast logo and we drag it to the Sonic Shade layer to parent it. That way the mask we just made will only affect this layer. Now down here on the mask controls we need to feather it a little bit. And yeah that's pretty much it. Uh, for the lighting it's pretty much the same, except the layer mode in this case is set to soft light. Uh, same thing with the backgrounds, only that in this case you don't really need to parent it to any other layer. So I won't show how I did it, because it's basically what we already made but simpler. Now for the particles. Uh, first, again, we need to create a new solid limit particles. Uh, then on the effects tab right here, we search for particles. It'll give us three options. I personally work with particle world.
uh, this right here is the preset that comes with this effect. Over here you can edit stuff like the birth rate, longevity, which is basically for how long the particles will be alive until they disappear. Uh, the producer, physics, and the particles themselves. Uh, here you can change their appearance, make them look like stars, maybe blocks, and a bunch of other neat stuff. Uh, here you can set their animation. In this case, we need the viscous animation as a base. Uh, then we need to edit their velocity to make them a little bit more stationary, so we set this to 0.2, for example. As we can see here, gravity is too high, so we lower it to, say, minus 0.4. We set the resistance to something around 4. Uh, gravity is still too high. Uh, oh, bruh, let's lower this. Now it's looking more like something we want. Let's edit the birth rate and longevity like this. Once we have that pretty much done, we can edit the particle itself. Here we have many options like the birth and death size, which are very self-explanatory. They basically set the size the particles will have when they are born and the size they will have when they disappear. We can set it to like 0.07, maybe edit them a little, depending on what we need really. Uh, here we can set the size variation to 100%. Now for the birth and death color. This pretty much sets the color the particles will have when they are born and when they disappear. I have this picture here with the color I need. Maybe have more of a reddish white for when they die. You are free to explore your own options when you do this. And that's pretty much it for the particles, I think. Now we simply move the producer to where we need the particles to be, adjust the radius and rotate it to follow the hillside. We can edit some stuff later if we need. And lastly, we put this layer under the character and that's it. And I think that's it for today. Boy, this took a while. I'm already working on my next project, so stay tuned for that. Animation takes a while, but <laughs> believe me, I won't take two years to upload anything ever again. So if you want to keep updated, follow me on Instagram, where I post the progress on projects while working. Uh, Alright, that's it. Uh, gotta go, bye!